broke out. The barge pulled up right next to us. This week on Lucky Fish. Nah, scratch that. What we do have is a live Q&A from our home in Mongolia tomorrow. Don't miss details on how you can join in at the end of the video. So Sunday the 4th of February, it's uh, just before noon and we're still here at... Where are we again? Oh my goodness. I'm still working. <laughs> You're having a glue crisis? Yeah. I've got a bit of stuff in there kit. Oh yeah. That much and close. Yeah, and that's um, can't unscrew the end of that one either. Yeah, it's stuck. Yeah, that's why I'm having this crisis. <laughs> Still working. Things are starting to look a little more organised. Yeah, we're at yeah, boot. Are you waiting for the wind to turn? Yeah, we're waiting for southerly change to come. It's still easterly right now. Not ideal for heading away to Bimini. We're at Boot Key Harbour, found a really nice little anchorage right by the bridge. It's Boot Key behind us. So I was putting in some inspection hatches into the pod. We've been watching the weather forecast and it looks like the southerly change is only an hour or so away, we're hoping. And then we can take off for a 120 mile passage up to Bimini. And then they forecast a westerly change, which would be perfect just to roll on through to Nassau. Maybe a two day sail, 120 up to Bimini and another 80 or so on to Nassau around the Great Bahama Bank. But the north end this time, the north end around Andros. So we'll wait and see, but if the weather gods are in our favour, we could be in Nassau after a non-stop sail. Tuesday, sometime on Tuesday, arrival in the daylight, with a passage across the Bahama Bank in the daylight tomorrow. So, fingers crossed, <laughs> so that would be ideal. That'll get us into Nassau three or four days before our first guests arrive. Yeah, that would be ideal. Be ideal, alright, and then we'd have enough time to finish the last of the jobs and... To <laughs> Deflate the doll and hide it away. Did I? Did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we always deflate the the inflatable toys before the guests turn up. <laughs> um, moving on. I've lost my train of thought now. And we might have stopped saying that. And we might have uh, time to clean the boat as well before they get here. Actually, we had some good spray over the deck on the way through here, and it really did clean the boat. So. But there's final, final nooks and crannies that need to be done as well. Anyway, that's it from us. Another beautiful day. Shame we're breezing through Boot Key. It looks like a really interesting place. They got hit pretty hard by Irma. There's plenty of evidence of that around. But the rebuilding's underway and apparently there's a ton of work here for carpenters. People who want to work in the service industries and so on. So, yeah. Yeah, it's an old rope. It happens. Looks like we're hooked on a piece of old rope or something, an old mooring. We topped off our fuel tanks at Marathon. We have two Yamaha 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard engines and carry 25 gallons of fuel. It gives us a range of over 200 miles on one engine at 3 knots in calm weather or about 100 miles at 5 knots on both engines. I saw a shark but he's gone. The boat will do a little over 7 knots at full speed on a calm sea. No Gulf Stream yet, we're getting knocked. We're supposed to get a southerly change and if anything it's gone slightly east. More on the nose, pushing us in, back into the shore away from the Gulf Stream. That's what Bruce Matlack said, don't believe the weather forecasts for the Strait of Florida. It's probably right. Monday morning, 5th of February, on at uh, about 6am in the morning, we had a pretty good night sail and not a lot of wind. Only 5 or 7 knots of breeze. And we tried to pick up the Gulf Stream fairly early after leaving Boot Key Harbour by heading out at 90 degrees to the coastline to intersect the Gulf Stream. but it, didn't really work out after 
two or three hours of steaming straight into 15 knots southeasterly at that time. It was apparent the Gulf Stream wasn't really there, or if it was, it was pretty fickle. So we turned to the northeast, put ourselves on our heading for Bimini area, and uh, took a much more sort of acute angle to intersect the Gulf Stream some 12 hours later. So we left at 2 p.m. yesterday and 2 a.m. this morning. We finally got about a knot, knot and a half of assistance from the Gulf Stream. The water temperature went from 24 and a half to 25 and a half degrees C. And uh, we knew we were in it. It didn't get any stronger than that. The NOAA website only forecast up to two knots. That was about right as predicted. At one point during the night we passed by quite close to two passenger ships that were well lit. They were heading south and normally any south going traffic tries to avoid the Gulf Stream so they sit on the edges of it. That was a pretty good sign when we passed those guys and sure enough we did hit the Gulf Stream shortly after crossing their sterns. The Gulf Stream was sitting in about 500 feet or 170 metres of water. During the night I began reading up on uh, Van Sant's book and some of the other guidebooks we have on board and Riding Rock looked to be about a, as good a place as any to cross the Grand Bahama Bank. So that's what we're aiming for. We should get there around mid-morning today and then we've got about a 50 odd mile crossing of the bank, most of which we'll be able to do during the daylight. If the weather holds and the fuel holds, then we'll steam straight on for Nassau. That remains to be seen. We just used our first tank of gas, motor sailing. We did about 80 miles motor sailing on one tank, which is pretty good. So I think we've got plenty of gas. Uh, we'll wait and see. Fair bit of shipping around now. We're in the middle of the Gulf Stream. A lot of north going ships, tankers and freighters. And, uh, None of them have been a problem for us. Um, missing most of them by two or three miles. Never really like going in front of them. Just been watching this guy here. Let's zoom in a bit. And uh, let's see what the Federal M's. He's a uh, he's a cargo ship. Bearing currently is 144. Well, this, that's the one we watch, that's the relative bearing to us. If that doesn't change over time, then you're on a collision course. I think he was about 152 before, so his bearing is coming down close towards what our heading is. In other words, he's going to pass in front of us. Our heading's 082. And the closest point of approach is going to be two miles, so we'll pass two miles across his stern, his relative speed, the time to closest approach here in hours, 15 minutes we'll be passing him. On a boat with two engines, a simple way to learn the importance of speed versus range is to run both engines at similar revs and check what speed you're doing. Then turn one engine off you just cut your fuel consumption by half. Now check your speed. It will be over half what you were doing previously, therefore you just extended the range of your boat. We're just passing South Riding Rock. You can see it just in the background there. We've crossed the Gulf Stream and now we are about to enter the Great Bahama Bank. The depth has gone from a couple of hundred metres down to 10 metres pretty suddenly. And we're just uh, going through the cut at the moment. Pick up our course across the Northwest Channel and then down to Nassau. Very little wind. We've got a uh, eight and a half knot westerly as predicted. Really not enough to push us at any appreciable speed. So we're motoring. We've got the three sails up, but they are neither dragging us nor propelling us. They are just hanging like flags. All in all very pleasant so far. It's probably fairly typical crossing of the Gulf Stream given that everyone avoids it anything over 15 knots and certainly anything at all from the north or northwest through easterly. What happens next remains to be seen. We've got some uh, overcast conditions that have just moved in with the westerly. I believe it's going to be followed by a stronger easterly change which hopefully will be across the bank and heading south to Nassau before that arrives but we'll see. 
know, the watercolors just changed to a familiar green cerulean. And speaking of cerulean, who's looking cerulean today? Is that the colour of your top? Look, you match the sea perfectly. <laughs> Camouflaged. We ran at least one engine the whole leg to Chub Key, where we turned to enter Northwest Channel. We wanted to keep the hammer down to miss the easterly change, but it quickly became a fuel and distance equation. Fortunately, the wind arrived in the morning, but it was on the nose. Tuesday morning, 7.30, uh, we're just off Nassau, or New Providence Island. Nassau's the capital, and what's better known as. We've been hard on the wind for all night. They say gentlemen don't sail to windward, and if we had our choice, we wouldn't be. But uh, we wanted to make Nassau before the strong easterlies got in this afternoon. So we've managed to do that, but it has involved a bit of motor sailing and a bit of just motoring in calms yesterday which has left us very low on fuel. We've got about another 18 miles or so to head up into the wind to reach Nassau Harbour. Uh, unfortunately we weren't able to lay it on one tack from Chub Key where we arrived off 1am this morning. So we've sailed the boat hard on the wind. We've been doing six to seven knots over a one metre sea and about 15 knots of breeze. The uh, boat doesn't point terribly high when there's any sort of chop running. So what we've found with the Warham is if we do have to go to weather, it's good to run an engine just to give you a bit of extra power to climb up over the waves and allow you to pinch a bit higher allows you to pinch the boat and achieve better tacking angles. But now we're low on fuel, so we probably don't have sufficient fuel. We've got about six hours of hard running and one tank left that'll be on one engine. And that'll be touch and go that we'd have sufficient fuel to reach Nassau Harbour without stopping. There's very few places to stop outside Nassau Harbour one marina which we have managed to lay more or less on the western end of the island called Lifford Marina. It's very exclusive by the sounds of it. Some of the most exclusive residential property in the world there. Uh, they don't welcome visiting boats although they do sell you fuel and propane and so forth. Uh, they won't offer you a slip which is unfortunate because without a doubt we would stop there rather than push on. So what we're going to do is call into Lifford, fuel up, that'll give us a bit of comfort to get around to Nassau Harbour this afternoon, hopefully ahead of the easterly which could come in between 20 and 28 knots. That'll be hard on the nose, probably motoring under two engines and uh, bouncing our way up the Nassau. And not ideal but it is what it is. We've achieved what we set out to do which was to get here before the strong easterlies, just the fuel situation that leaves us with this uh, bit of a conundrum right at the end. So I was just down below getting some clothes and respectable clothing for us to wear on our landfall here at Life at K Marina. It was a near run thing with the fuel. I guess we're not in yet, but we must be running on the smell of an oily rag. It turns out it looks like we got enough. It didn't stop us from emptying the three so-called empty cans into one can to get a couple more cupfuls of gas in readiness on the starboard engine in case this port engine gave out. But all's good. We just called Life at K and they're happy to sell us some fuel. We might push our luck and see if they'll give us a slip at a reasonable price. But they don't accept yachts during the winter months. In the summer, in the summer months apparently you can persuade them to rent you a, a slip here. Well, 
was a super quick pit stop at Life at Key Marina. We were there literally five minutes, I'd say. Yeah, they were efficient. They were efficient. We took on 25 gallons of gas. Couldn't get propane here. But now we're going to push on for Nassau proper. It's 11 a.m. and the easterly is supposed to start filling in after lunch. So the pressure's still on us. Well, we just arrived off Nassau Harbour Western Entrance. Had a two-hour motor straight into the wind. No sign of the easterly yet, so it's great. We're arriving at about 1.30 in the afternoon. Just pulled up Nassau Harbour Control and they uh, have given us permission to enter, anchor for the night, and then we'll proceed to Yacht Haven tomorrow, where I understand they have a free slip for boats that are wanting to clear customs and immigration and complete all the formalities. Isn't that cute? Nassau Harbour Control have a building shape just like a ship. What a beauty. Bit of a great day to be arriving. We don't care. <laughs> this afternoon and this evening we're going to stay on the boat, find somewhere snug to anchor and get some rest. Pretty happy to be here. About 370 miles since we left Laval back on Friday. And it's been go go all day, every day. It's been go go all day, every day for the last two and a half months. So, a couple of rum and cokes tonight, soft pillow. Life couldn't be better. Someone's already found her soft pillow. Oh yeah, we got some lovely steaks. Some lovely red meat to barbecue or fry up tonight. I guess that's the Atlantis Resort over there. Nothing like completing a voyage and uh, feeling like you've actually accomplished something. We had our small trials and tribulations along the way, nothing too great. Lots of head scratching. Thinking about fuel economy and navigation routes and location of the Gulf Stream and what the weather's gonna do and what the plan B's were if everything went haywire. In the end it's all worked out as it normally does. So yeah, good to be here. Three days ahead of our first guests. Four days ahead of our first guests. So we're looking forward to meeting them. Getting the boat looking really spot on for their arrival. Well this is the anchorage. They're quite happy for you to anchor here for Nix, which is great. Right opposite the yoga retreat and I guess that's Atlantis on Paradise Island. The following day we cleared in and started on the last of the boat jobs. The day before our guests arrived and as if to herald the end of the boat work we noticed some familiar music coming from the beach at Paradise Island. Could it really be them? We moved the boat closer, and then, after the concert that night...
What are you doing? Oh, I was asleep. I was listening to the last few bars of Telegraph Road, fell asleep. And the next minute, <laughs> it's like war broke out. The barge pulled up right next to us. That was amazing. God, talk about wake up with a start though. So <laughs> <laughs> what's the next time? <laughs> under attack. <laughs> I thought something blew up on the deck. Yeah. I'm like, what was he that? Was, he was, I don't know, 50 meters away. Well, everyone, we hope you can join Zaya and I for a live patron-only Q&A tomorrow, Sunday. We will be talking about some exciting news, our plans for 2019 and beyond. If you are not a patron and have a question for us, no worries. Please leave it in the comments below and we will answer it in the video and post it later. We have put the link in time to access the live feed up on Patreon. Until then, thank you for watching.